Welcome to another episode of Underground Spotlight here on Forge Master Metal Reviews. This is one of our favorite segments. We know it's one of yours too. I'm your co-host, Ben Foe. Brandon here. There's nothing quite like gearing up for another adventure into the dank crypts of Bandcamp where we know great metal riches await us. Here at Forge Master Metal Reviews, we create top lists, in-depth album reviews, and we help you get the most out of your metal, musicians and fans alike. All right, shield bearers to the front. Arch at the rear. Let the necromancer take point. They'll lead us into the dungeons where we'll find our favorite metal albums from Bandcamp. Frog Lord, the Mystic Toad, released July 2nd on The Swamp Records. The metal scene's favorite fuzzed out frog worshiping good guy Doom from the British UK is back with the Mystic Toad, and it's easily their most exciting release yet. We covered these guys previously on one of our other Best of Bandcamp segments, and the one man frog outfit is clearly hungry to take over the niche of Frog Doom. From their Bandcamp, the album actually has a pretty sick narrative, which is after overthrowing the humans and ascending to his mushroom throne, Froglord must fight for the Earth's survival once more. Aliens from the planet Saturn have learned of the human's demise and now seek to harvest it for their precious space minerals. But immune to Froglord's mighty death ray, he must flee deep into the Amazon to learn a secret to defeat the alien invaders before it is too late. The Mystic Toad is a trip, wielding some serious riffage from Sludge, Stoner, Doom, slamming the listener into the depths of the swamps with some serious psychedelic effects. This was an awesome spin on the frog world building, throwing in that sci-fi narrative. The journey continues. All hail the frog lord. Four out of five, Titanic frogs. Independently released on July 9th, one man black metal band Skatana Wept has released their fourth full length record entitled Eighth Murder Capital. This is a raw, black and melodic death record with enough of variety and interesting riffing to keep the listener engaged and curious throughout the whole album. It's nice that none of the songs overstay their welcome, and with eight tracks and roughly 33 minutes in a total runtime, this record really has no fat on it. I really like the unique drum patterns on this album, though a much more focused tone on the drum mix itself. I think would help to match the rawness of the guitars and the vocals, I think it would have suited the album overall a bit much better. If you are a fan of the black and melodic death metal, a style that really doesn't get a lot of love at this, you know, time of being, be sure to check out this one. It gets four out of five high crime zones. More in the Light, Suffer, and Then We're Gone, released July 2nd on Argonauta Records. As you know, we love our New England metal brothers, and when our boys release a banger, it's gonna get a spotlight on our channel. CT-based Doom, More in the Light, have released their first full-length debut on the renowned Argonauta Records. In a world full of saturated traditional Doom outfits, More in the Light created something pretty goddamn unique and special here. Our good friend Dave Kaminsky of Studio Warmwood produced the record, and he has a great production that shines on this album. There's a delicate balance of old school lo-fi sound mixed with the vintage and modern sounding techniques to give Suffer Then We're Gone some bloody fantastic atmosphere. The album gets right into the heaviness with When the Fear Subsides, and when the album twists and turns with traditional candle mass like doom riffing, there are some surprises. For example, More in the Light, they welcome some local New England musicians like Mike Kerr from Firstborn on a guitar solo, and Alex Newton from the black metal band Zonga on a 70s organ. That brought some elevation to the compositions that I think were needed. I think where this album really shines though is with Andrew's vocals. The lower register of the vocal performance makes this Doom record very unique and the lyrics are just downright depressing. But it's interesting to see 80s inspired Doom dealing with such intense emotional subject matter. Definitely check this one out. It's great. Four out of five open caskets. Owl Cave is a one-man project that has come out swinging on July 9th with their debut full-length, Broken Speech. This single-track, 43-minute-long record is full of unique, 
avant-garde approaches to atmospheric, sludgy black metal. The lack of vocals isn't really an issue because this record creates a super unique atmosphere. It almost sounds like a soundtrack to a cinema noir that takes place in the dystopian, hellacious version of Earth. At times, this record is going to leave you wondering what the hell you're listening to as a droning guitar feedback becomes a cacophony of blast beats and dissonant chords. This is sincerely one of the coolest instrumental albums of this year. The wide sonic qualities really help to elevate this record to another level. Owl Cave's debut album, Broken Speech, is a noteworthy one that gets 4.6 out of 5 distorted visions of the future. Definitely check this one out if you like sludgy, dismal atmospheres in your instrumental music. Messer Thim, CLG, JO2182, 05102. Released July 4th, 2021 on Independent. If you haven't listened to Australia-based Messer Thim, you have to check them out solely because they are very unique. I describe these guys as atmospheric black trance music. And if you want to piss off the metal and metal adjacent crowd, put these guys on and just watch. I honestly don't get the hate. I love these guys. But overall, most people describe them as in the middle of the spectrum between black metal and and synth wave. People generally say something like it's too spacey and synth driven for most of the black metal fans and then too upbeat and dance like for the synth wave crowd. I don't care. Fuck them. This band rules. The black metal duo is incredibly prolific, constantly releasing killer content at an impressive speed. I love that Messer Thim are still pushing the boundaries of that sci-fi and fantasy vibe in the black metal landscape and it's nice to hear something so refreshing beyond your typical roaming the forest and hating everyone. This album is a cosmic entity in itself totally atmospheric and honestly practically flawless in what it accomplishes. Check it out. It's amazing. Four and a half out of five neutron stars. This record came as a very pleasant surprise on my band camp dungeon diving. Herf's Drum Rituals, July 13th record, Orsprung, is not your typical lo-fi black metal album. There is a lot of substance on this record as you start to get further in, and you're showcased to a marvelous and mystical atmosphere about halfway through the album. Unlike other lo-fi bands like Spectral Wound that are just leaning into the cold and dismal, Hell's Doom Ritual isn't afraid to get a bit transcendent, busting out chants, pan flutes, and siphoning from the aura of conscious creation and magic. This is a notable black metal record because it's got some gusto by introducing you to their gritty lo-fi flavors first, but it doesn't take long for this duo to show their softer, more melodic side. The contrast is really well done, and for that, I'm giving Orsprung 4.5 out of 5 marshy lowlands. What were your favorite picks from Bandcamp? Be sure to leave some links down below in the comments. Thanks for liking, sharing, and commenting. Go with the gods, Forge Masters. Breathe deep the humid air of the swamp and worship the frog lord. See you next time.